Hi, Blast Pop here. Today I'm taking a look at the Waterloo 1815 game that came in the C3i magazine uh, in issue number 33. This is a full-sized game board, uh, a 22 30 by 40, 22 by 34 inch map sheet, along with counters, rules, and a couple of game cards. Um, it is a low-density, quick-playing game. Looks to be solitaire suitable and uses a similar system to that uh, included in the Gettysburg game, which came out in the previous issue of C3i Magazine. Um, now, the package is, is rather impressive in terms of the rules book. While you have a nice cover and, and illustrations in it, the it's nicely illustrated and in color. So you get a sense here of, it's, it's, it's a semi-gloss, almost feels like a little bit of fiber in it. Um, you have your movement, combat phase, uh, cores movement, units, essential units are cores. And the rules are in eight pages minus the um, cover and uh, illustrations. Also included is a scenario setup card or sheet and profusely illustrated with examples and uh, battle scenes to help set the the mood and the feel for the the campaign and if you're unable to understand a certain segment of the rules well it's nicely illustrated here for you And then you have, you have your campaign set up in, in scenario rules. And then you have the designer area, which includes his Mark Herman's designer notes. It's always a pleasure to get a new game designed by Mark. Also included in issue number 33 is a sheet of counters, and it's not exclusively for Waterloo 1815. Um, the forces are basically on one quarter of the counter sheet. There's additional variants and erratic counters for other games. This published by GMT Games whom C3I is closely related. And you have some counterbacks right here. The counters are the thick cardstock, brown core. A very nicely illustrated combat effects and movement cost chart, terrain effects chart, nice solid, no skipping, an attack summary, basically how you conduct the combat, essentially both players roll a die, take various modifiers for battle stars, um, headquarters in range and command, cavalry supports, um, and then if the defenders of detachment, which are smaller counters, um, the attacker adds two to his die roll, and then you compare your differential to achieve result, which can be eliminated, a blow and a retreat, or a stalemate. And the higher one rolling the dice isn't impacted by the results. To illustrate the detachments, these are the smaller counters on the counter sheet they're the half inch you have a setup card a turn record track all of eight turns set up remaining moves and attacks and your sequence of play all nicely illustrated and very tastefully done 
I ordered this directly from um, C3I and it must have been on the last shipment out before the coronavirus shut down California so I was happy to get this um, anyway you have your map here it's 22 by 34 very nicely illustrated uh, very pleasing to the eye and the key to the battle and in the game are the locations of roads and crossroads because it was a, a campaign of crossroads and moving up you'll see the famous Quatre Bras um, and further north you have Mont Saint Jean and Waterloo up here and then you have over to the right you have Jimblo and um, you have Lignier and um, so it gives you a, a operational imp understanding of the battle as opposed to the campaign which is in many cases done very tactically um, and then the terrain effects you have your open you have stream and um, roads and towns um, and bridges really there isn't that much that terrain wise which is imp impactful um, the key again is is the fact that cavalry units um, have double movement allowance if they move entirely along roads this has been the Waterloo 1815 campaign designed by Mark Herman published by C3I magazine Please comment, like, and subscribe. Bye.